Okay, yeah. So like Jacqueline said, we'll, we'll take one more introduction here. Uh, if you click on the participants button on the bottom of the screen, then a little pop-up will show up and you should be able to click a button that says raise hand. So if you'd like to do your introduction, go ahead and raise your hand that way and I'll be able to see it. Okay, Bharat Patel. Hi, this is Bharat Patel. I live in La Mirada. Uh, and thank you for getting us started. Uh, Morning earlier this year yeah, uh, yeah. with our garden. Uh, we have uh, finished everything. We have a few few fruit trees. Uh, everything is uh, doing okay except for my avocado tree. Okay. The leaves are turning really brown and I'm not sure if it's the, the weather. I'm watering it at least daily. Uh, uh, what the issue is. So I would just uh, like some uh, help on that if possible. Thank you. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you, Bharat. Uh, actually, I, I did a consultation for Bharat, uh, I guess, at the end of uh, last year, and we did a design for his garden, and I'm glad, to, I was actually going to follow up with you and see how, see how things are going, so I'm, I'm glad to hear you got it done. That's awesome. Okay, so um, I think I'm going to get started here. Um, so just a little bit of an introduction again. Uh, most of you, I'm sure, know me. I'm Farmer Rishi. And uh, we're offering this monthly uh, members gardening lesson and Q&A through our nonprofit organization, Sarvodaya Institute. Um, so if you don't know about that, I'm gonna put a link to our website up in the chat. You can, it's upliftmentofall.org, that's our website. And so we're gonna be doing this every month and it's going to be offered to, this time we're offering it to anyone because we just want to let people know about it. Uh, but we're going to be offering this, this monthly gardening lesson and Q&A to our members. And member, membership starts at just $5 a month and that's going to support our nonprofit organization. Um, if you don't know, uh, you know, we're based in Los Angeles and uh, we have a couple different demonstration gardens. We have a one at my parents' home called the Growing Home. It's like a urban uh, or a suburban home demonstration garden. We have a small urban farm. Uh, and then we also have a public garden at a church called the Growing Commons. And so we maintain all these gardens through our nonprofit organization. We do a lot of community outreach and education uh, using those gardens, both in person and online. And so uh, we're trying to build up a base of membership for our organization so we can keep our work going. So if you'd like to join us for these uh, monthly member gardening lessons and Q&As, um, go to that link and you can sign up to be a member for just $5 a month. And then we will message you every month. We're gonna try to set a schedule actually. Um, this, to, this time I just kind of chose a, a random date, but uh, starting from next month, I'm, I'm gonna try to do this on the second Wednesday of every month at 5.30 p.m., okay? So if you wanna join us, second Wednesday of every month at 5.30 p.m. If uh, nothing comes up, so, and that, should, that should remain the same. And again, just $5 a month is, uh, is what we're asking for, and that's a donation, tax-deductible donation. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on our topic of the month. And I'm gonna try to keep these topics kind of related to where we are in the season. So uh, right now, uh, you know, most of you will be joining us from California, but I'm going to also, I'm going to try to keep it broad so people who are, who are joining from around the, the nation can uh, benefit as well. But either way, we're in the middle of the season, middle of summer. And so this is like the, the hottest part of the year, right? Uh, this is not a time really that we're going to be doing a lot of planting of vegetables. Uh, vegetable planting would have been done a, a couple months ago. Uh, the next season of vegetable planting is going to be in about, depending on how the weather goes, usually we'll, we'll start planting seeds for the fall winter season around um, October in California, or sorry, uh, September. Yeah, September, October in California. If you're on the East Coast or somewhere in the Midwest, actually right now might be uh, getting close to when you want to be starting seeds for your fall and winter season. But I thought today would be a, this time of the year would be a really nice time just to talk about fruit tree care because it's something that we can really do at any time of the year. Uh, and, and uh, you know, not too much else going on for us in the garden. So it's a great time to give a little bit of extra love to our trees. 
Okay, so um, the main thing that we're going to look at when we're talking about fruit tree care, and th you know, this is going to come down to any really anything in the garden. We want to look at the at the health of our soil in in our gardens and and under our fruit trees, right? The health of the soil is going to be the most important thing to the health of our trees. Okay, and so I'm going to give you a few suggestions as to, like Swada had, uh, Swada had mentioned, had asked, how do we determine the health of our soil, right? And of course, you can send your, your soil into a lab if you want to uh, get, you know, some numbers that will help you determine whether the soil is in a healthy state or not. But actually, we can do this uh, very easily just you know, with our senses. Uh, there's plenty of ways to determine how our soil is doing just with our hands and our, our eyes and our nose. Um, so let's, let's just talk about that for a little bit. So um, the first thing is what I, would, what I would suggest you do with your fruit trees and with any of the soil in your garden is just do a quick test on how quickly your soil is able to drink water, okay? So one of the things that I find, you know, mo most of the time, like I would say like 90% of the time when people have problems with their fruit trees, they tell me the, a very similar story, right? Uh, and it goes something like this. It's like, oh, I moved into this house, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and these fruit trees were already there. And when we first moved in, the trees were giving us beautiful fruit. And then slowly over the years, you know, the fruit has declined, the trees are not doing well, they're, you know, they're getting, they're looking dry, the leaves are yellow, they're looking diseased, and they're just not, and, you know, in many cases, they've just completely stopped fruiting, right? And so I want you to think about, like, what are some of the processes that have happened over the, that time, like, over those 10, 20 years? Like, why has that tree just uh, lost its health and its vigor? Okay, so, um, Basically, you know, the, the, the most common theme as to why trees are declining is how we're taking care of them, right? Because what most people do is we, every year the tree is dropping leaves and we're, we're raking up those leaves that are under the tree and we're throwing them in the green bin or throwing them in the trash, right? So if you think about what's happening, right? The tree is putting all this effort, gathering sunlight, uh, photosynthesizing through its leaves, and then at some point in the year, it starts to drop those leaves and kind of is storing the energy that it's gathered in, in the green leaves by dropping them to the ground. And so that way they can feed the soil and then the tree can reabsorb those nutrients later, right? It's got its own system of, of capturing the energy that it's taken in from the sun and storing that energy so that it's available for it later. And actually that, that actually helps the tree build up its energy over time, right? The leaves are dropping, they're feeding the soil. The soil is uh, gathering energy, it's feeding that to the tree. And now the tree can produce more leaves, the leaves are dropping more leaves. And now this cycle is being created where the tree is gathering more and more energy. And so over time, the soil under the tree should actually be get healthier and healthier. But instead what's happening is we're raking those leaves up and we're throwing them away. And now every year the tree has to pull from its reserves to create those leaves and to create that fruit, especially fruit. Fruit, is, fruit takes a lot of energy for a tree to produce. So every time a tree produces leaves and produces fruit, if that energy doesn't somehow get back to the tree, back to the soil, then over the years, the tree's health is gonna decline. And actually, when I went to Bharat's house, uh, this is exactly what had happened to a couple of his trees which he ended up removing some of them because they actually, I think one of them actually fell over, just like fell over in the wind one year, one day. Um, so this is what happens to most of our fruit trees. And so really, um, you know, from a very basic point, we want to start to feed the soil, take care of the soil that's under the tree so that the tree can start to gather up energy again. Okay. Um, so the first thing uh, I mentioned doing a little test to determine where your soil is at right now. The first thing I'd like you to do is just go outside and take your hose and put it on like a medium flow and just let the hose run under the tree for a couple minutes. And what I want you to see is how the water is moving on the soil when you turn, the, when you turn that hose on, okay? 
if your soil is unhealthy, if it's, if it's compact, if it's dry, what usually will happen is the soil will form into little puddles and then that water will quickly start to run down. You know, if there is any slope, then the, the water will start to run down the slope. If there isn't a slope, the water will just kind of pool up and slowly spread across the surface of the soil. So if you see that happening, what that means is that even though you're watering, like maybe you have sprinklers, maybe you even have a drip system, even when you're watering, very little water is actually reaching the tree because the soil is so hard and so compact and doesn't have any microbes, doesn't have any organic matter in it, that none of the water is actually able to reach the roots of the tree. So even though you're watering, you may be watering for hours and hours and hours, and I've ha had people tell me this all the time, right? Like, oh, I water my tree, you know, for hours and hours and hours, and it, it just, it dries up and it, you know, or it dried up and it died. And what's happening again is that the soil is so hard, it's not able to accept water, uh, that no matter how much you water on the top, the water doesn't go in or it goes in very shallow. And then when the sun comes, all that water just evaporates. Okay, so that's what's happening in, in most circumstances. So just see, look at how water travels uh, when you're putting it on the soil. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to see how, turn the water pressure down on the hose turn it down to a very low trickle and I want you to find that point where when as the water is trickling out of the hose that the water is absorbing into the soil okay that's going to tell you how fast your soil can actually drink okay if, if your soil is in a very uh, unhealthy state just like when we're in an, an un unhealthy state we can't just like be eating lots of food. We can't be drinking, like, chugging water, right? Like if we're sick, we take water in like very slow sips. And the same thing with our soil. If our soil's, if our soil's unhealthy, it's not been taken care of. Uh, it's, you can think of it like your soil's a little sick. And so it can only take water very slowly. Okay, so find that point where with the hose, where we turn the water down as very, very low and find the point where the water is actually absorbing into the soil. And that's going to tell you how fast, uh, how you should be watering your tree. Okay. If the if the soil can only absorb water very slowly, then I want you to only water very very slowly. If the, if you can turn the hose up a bit, and the water is still sinking in, then you're okay to water a little bit more quickly. Your your soil's at a state where it's able to to really you know chug more water down, and that means that. That, at that, you know, if that's happening, then you shouldn't really have, be having too many problems with your fruit trees because they should be quite healthy. Okay, so that's just a little test. Uh, the other thing you want to do is just, you know, try to dig into the soil. If, are you able to dig in with a tool? Are you able to dig in with your, are you actually, are you able to dig in with your hand first? Is it loose enough that you can dig with your hand? Or do you need a tool? Do you need a little trowel? Or do you need a pickaxe? You know, like how, how, how hard is it? to break into your soil because however hard it is for you to get in the soil, that's how hard it is for the roots of the tree to get into the soil. That's how hard it is for water to get into the soil. Um, and then we're just gonna look at color. You know, is it, is it more toward like a dark chocolate color or is it more toward like a, a light wood color, right? Uh, dark chocolate color, more towards a dark color is gonna mean the soil is healthier and we should al also have an aroma. If your soil is really healthy, it'll have this nice, very mushroomy aroma. So those are all ways for you to examine where, where your soil is at currently. Okay, um, so it's just, just some very basic things I'm gonna suggest. Uh, number one, the soil around your tree should never be exposed to the sun. And really the, most of the soil in your garden should not really be exposed to the sun. You should keep the soil around your tree covered with some kind of mulch and a mulch is basically anything that's 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 like a, a material that you're using as a blanket over the soil so that could be wood chips that could be straw uh, that could be compost that could be leaves so normally a tree would create its own mulch it'll be dropping its leaves and it'll be covering the soil with its own leaves uh, this could also be plants you could have you could put other plants around your tree and those plants will cover the soil for you. They'll also help feed the soil. 
So you want to cover uh, cover the, the soil around your tree and actually cover most of the soil in your garden. So for most people, what I would recommend, uh, and if you've seen my, I've, I've been posting a little video, uh, some videos on Instagram because I'm putting in a garden. Uh, I'm at my in-law's house this week and last week. So I've been putting in a garden over here and I put some videos on my Instagram uh, of what I'm doing. And so what I'm doing here is what I would recommend most of you do is if you haven't fed your soil in a long time or ever, then what I would suggest you do is put several inches of compost. Okay, and compost you can either buy in bags from a hardware store or a nursery, or if you're gonna do a very large area, you can find a local compost supplier. So if you're in LA, uh, there's one, I'll, I'm gonna type it into the chat here, it's called Cal Blend Soil. And there's another one called Whittier Fertilizer. Um, if you're if you are doing a large area, you can buy compost in bulk from these uh, compost suppliers. If you're not in LA, you you can look up in your area who is a compost supplier. And so, what I would suggest you do is put at least three inches of compost on the soil around your tree in about a six foot diameter. Uh, yeah, six foot diameter. Okay, so you want to cover the soil all around your tree with compost about three inches in a six foot diameter, all right? So that's the first thing we're gonna do just to feed the soil, uh, cover it and introduce some organic matter, which is, organic matter is, is basically anything that's made out of carbon. So that would be leaves, that would be wood, that would be bodies of, plant, of, of animals. We are carbon, primarily carbon beings. Um, so any manure is also carbon. Carbon is a very important, um, it's like the, uh, how would I say this? So if you could, one of the ways you can think about this is if you have, if you're just looking at your, your dirt, okay, your dirt is like your bricks, okay, and your carbon is like your mortar. So you got to have, you have the bricks, you need, you're missing the mortar. So you're bringing in compost that's going to give you the mortar to take those bricks together and build structures in the soil. And, and the, the, the beings that are gonna build those structures are the microbes and compost is also full of microbes. So by adding compost, we're, take, we're taking the bricks we already have, we're adding the mortar that uh, is in the, the carbon in the compost and then the masons who are the microbes in the compost. So we have those three together, they're gonna actually take our soil, which is now all these, you know, these particles that are pressed together, and they're going to take them and they're going to pull them apart. They're going to stack them together. They're going to build these structures that allow water and air and nutrients into the soil. Okay, so uh, three inches of compost, and then on at least three inches, at least three inches, and probably no more than six. Okay, so at least three inches of compost around your tree. Uh, and then on top of that, three inches of wood chips, okay, wood chip mulch. And so that, what the wood chips are going to do, they're going to shelter even the compost, prevent the compost from drying out. And that's like a, it's like having a sheet and then a blanket, you know, we're just creating that right layering on the soil surface for decomposition to happen, for microbes to be able to propagate, for moisture to be retained. And with this simple layering, three inches of compost, three inches of wood chips, we're gonna see significant benefits to the soil and significant benefits to our tree's health over time. And this is actually something that you would wanna do if you haven't, if your trees are in a really bad state, dire state. Uh, this is something I would suggest you do probably for three years in a row. As that compost breaks down and the wood chips start to break down, then the next year add Again, three inches of compost, three inches of wood chips. And after about three years, you should be in a really, really uh, healthy state of soil and you should see those trees really starting to bounce back. And, and really, you know, if you're even no matter how dire the state of your tree is, like if it's just barely hanging on for, for dear life, you know, as long as it's not totally dead, you have a chance of bringing it back this way. Okay. So, that's what I'm just going to suggest as a as a uh, general thing for you. 
for you all today. Um, and the next thing I'm going to talk about is water, right? So I, I talked about, we talked about the hose and finding that, um, that place where you can see how quickly the water is infiltrating into the soil. And so that's going to be very important for us to understand how quickly our soil is able to drink water. And then when we're, when we're providing the, the soil with the tree with water, what we want to do is we basically want to, um, any, with watering for most plants, what we want to do is we want to have this kind of fluctuation in how moist the soil is. Okay. We don't want it to, we never want it to be like always moist. And then, of course, we don't want it to be always dry. We actually want to bounce back and forth between moist and dry, moist and dry, moist and dry. So if you have, if your trees are getting watered on a daily basis, and this is often the case if, some, if you have a tree planted in a lawn, right? If you have a tree planted in a lawn and you're watering that lawn with uh, sprinklers every day, there's a high chance that your tree is not, doing, is not going to do well. And planting a tree in a lawn is almost never a good idea. Uh, if you have your tree in a lawn, you want to remove the lawn about, again, six foot diameter around the tree trunk. Get the grass away from the lawn, get the sprinklers off of the trunk of the tree. Um, if you have a sprinkler watering the trunk of your tree, you're going to get disease, you're going to get fungus, um, you're going to get microbes starting to actually decompose the bark of the tree, and the bark of the tree is the protective layer of the tree. Once the bark gets decomposed, then you're at the inside layer where the nutrients are actually going up and down. You get to that point, the tree is going to die. So don't water the trunk of your tree. When you're putting water, don't put water on, don't water on the trunk of your tree, right? The tree's roots that actually take up water, they're not like, they're not right below the trunk. They're out here usually. And there are these small fibrous roots around the tree, like away from the trunk. So when we're watering, we don't water near the trunk. We water away from the trunk. Uh, okay, so water away from the trunk. Water very slowly. Get those, you know, don't take the, take the uh, lawn out from under the tree. Um, the other thing you want to watch for, just, you know, general you want to watch for if you have a if you have a mow and blow gardener coming by and you have um and he's he's weed whacking you know he's got that trimmer the string trimmer that is whacking and he's wet and you have a lawn or something right up to your tree if he's weed whacking right around the trunk of your tree and he's hitting the trunk of your tree with the weed whacker again he's damaging the bark and then he's going to start to damage the inner layer and then your tree is going to be in trouble again so get the weed whacker away from the trunk of the tree. Okay, so how do we actually want to water the tree? Again, we want to water as very slowly. We want to water very deeply, and then we want to let the soil dry out. Okay, so water deeply, and then let the soil dry out. Water deeply, let the soil dry out. Uh, how long should you water? How often should you water is going to depend on the state that your tree is currently in. Okay, so if you're in the state that your soil is currently in. If your soil is in a poor state, your tree is in a poor state, then yeah, I want you to water deeply. I want you to water, I want you to turn that hose on a slight trickle and I want you to let it run for like maybe three, four hours. And then, uh, then I want you to wait like a week maybe and, and just keep checking that soil, the soil right around the tree, just stick your finger down in there. When you can't feel moisture, then go ahead and water again. Again, slow trickle, get it deeply soaked, and then again, wait. Okay? If your tree, if your, once your soil is to a, a healthier state and your tree is in a healthier state, or if you have a really mature old tree and you're trying to water a really mature old tree, then I want you to go even longer. Same slow trickle, but I want you to let it run for like half a day and then not water it for two, three weeks. Okay, so we're trying to make that deep water, dry, deep water, dry cycle even longer. 
and we're trying to really get the soil moist down deep and we're trying to draw those roots of the tree down deep, as deep as we can. Once the tree's roots get nice and super deep, then the tree is actually feeding, uh, you know, as it's photosynthesizing, it's feeding sugars into the soil, it's loosening the soil, its roots are getting down there, breaking up the soil. So the tree itself is actually going to do a lot to increase the soil's health as long as we give it this nice push in the beginning and we water it the right way. <clears throat> okay, and the last thing I'm going to say is um, pruning is also really important to a tree's health in most cases. So if you think, you know, if, if one of your thoughts is I should not, oh, I shouldn't prune my tree, I don't want to mess with it, you know, it's unnatural to prune, uh, you got the, that's not the right idea, okay? Uh, these trees, especially fruit trees, they've been developed by breed, human breeding. They need pruning to, to actually maintain a, a, a good, a healthy structure. So we do want to prune. I'm not going to go into pruning today. Right now is not really the season to prune. Pruning season would usually, was going to be um, in the winter for trees that go dormant. And then just in a cooler part of the year for, for trees that don't go dormant, usually we'll prune things like citrus um, after they've fruited. Okay, so that way you're not pruning off any flowers or any fruit. Okay, so uh, that's what I have prepared for you today. This is the, the format for these lessons is going to be like this. I'm going to have about half an hour of a prepared lesson, and then we're going to have a half an hour of uh, a Q&A. And uh, so I'm going to open it up now for, for questions. Um, I'm going to give preference today for people who are actually members of Sarvodaya Institute already. So if you are a member of Sarvodaya Institute, if you could hit the raise hand button and ask your question, I'll be happy to answer. And once, once we've gone through the members, I'm going to open it up to questions from everyone. Okay. So anyone who's a member who has a question, hit the participants button. It'll open up that little window and then raise your hand and I will call on you. Anyone? I'm gonna give you like five seconds. Okay, Jacqueline. You gotta unmute. Jacqueline, can you unmute? She's getting there, I see. <laughs> okay. Yeah. A um, couple of quick things. What kind of plants would be the plants you might grow under the fruit trees? And would, would a soaker hose in a circle around the base be a good idea un over the compost and under the chips? That's what I'm thinking. On trees okay. that are about seven years old, they're fairly young. Okay. 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 Good questions. Um, first question was what kind of trees, what kind of plants would you plant under the fruit tree? Okay. Um, so you got, you know, you, you definitely have a couple options here. Uh, if you're wanting to go the edible route, then what I would suggest is something that's going to cover the ground and um, is going to do just uh, do well under the, the canopy of the tree. A lot of times what I'll do, especially during the summer, is I'll do like sweet potatoes under the fruit trees because I can, you know, just stick the tuber under the ground and then the sweet potato has this, you know, spreading, crawling habit that'll cover the surface and give my, give the soil another layer of, of mulch, a, a plant mulch. Uh, so sweet potato is great. Um, I think here, anything else? Um, I do Jerusalem artichokes in the same way. I like the stuff under the fruit trees that you can just put and they're very easy to, you know, I don't have like vegetable plants that don't need a lot of babying and they'll just come up and spread. Um, then the, you know, for, for our garden in Claremont, what I'm doing here at my in-laws garden is I'm actually just putting native perennials under the fruit trees. So I just planted here a persimmon, I planted a tangerine and I planted a fig and a pomegranate so I put the tree and then about, about two feet from the point that I planted the tree, uh, I've put 
a couple of native perennials and flowering flowering perennials. And you know, it's just a good, great way to fill up the space, get some more roots in the ground, also have flowers for, uh, for beneficial insects, for bees, uh, and then adding, you know, adding beauty to the garden. So, and just a, a little note on that, um, you know, in terms of flowering plants, like for, for, you know, people love these plants with huge flowers. Insects and butterflies, they love plants with small flowers. So if you're trying to attract, you know, beneficial insects to your garden, look for the plants, look for the native plants that have small flowers, right? Like uh, a honeybee can't pollinate in amaryllis. Like the flower is like this big and, you know, there's not actually a lot of pollen on there. Honeybee loves plants like, you know, lavender and African blue basil and they love all these, in, in California, all the native sages that we have, um, you know, all these tiny, tiny little flowers, they're going to do a lot more to bring in beneficial insects than, uh, than our, uh, our people bred giant flowers. I have found the ornamental sage attracts everything and does not attract the little animals. So it's like I have tons of it because it's, it's so great. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. My, my grandpa, he's on the call here and he's, he's put sage and African basil all over his garden. He went from having to hand pollinate his uh, zucchinis to now the bees do all the pollination for him. He's just been spreading, spreading flowers all over the garden. So very important. Um, did, you have, did I do both your questions? Yes. Oh, oh no, you uh, asked about the water. water. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, soaker what you hose. described is perfect. The so soaker hose is, is great. Um, you don't even need to put it under the mulch. You can just put it right over. Um, and just, yeah, just do it right on the surface and it'll just soak all the way down through. Okay. And just to, while I remember here, um, I, on my personal website, farmerishi.com, I have a drip irrigation guide that's up for sale. It's $50. If you want to put in a drip irrigation system, this is a 20 page guide that I wrote. It's very thorough. It's for people who want to do this on their own. You know, irrigation can seem very daunting and complicated. It's, it's, it's actually quite simple. Um, so if you get that guide, it has all the instructions on, you know, the materials, how to design it, how to put it together, where to buy it, uh, if that's the route you want to go. And if not, you can always get someone else to do it for you. Okay, uh, Sarah Samuel. Hi, Farmer Ishii. Thank you for doing this. Uh, my question is, are there any fruit trees that you can grow in a pot or is it better just not to because they need more space? <laughs> okay, you look a little bit like, I don't know what's the word here, but the answer is yes. Don't be, dis don't be like sad. Okay. <laughs> you can definitely grow fruit trees in pots. Uh, I'm I'm growing several fruit trees and pots on my in my patio. Um, so the, the key thing here is you want you don't want a, a small pot, right? You want to have a nice big pot. Uh, I would recommend 25 gallons or more. Um, and then I'm using these, and you know, in our nursery we're using these too. Uh, I'm using these fabric pots. I have them for sale through Sarvode Institute too. Um, uh, the, the great thing with the fabric pots, if you're growing a tree or any perennial in a pot, if you don't, if you grow it in a ceramic or a wood or a plastic pot, you're going to get that root binding and the root circling at the bottom of the pot. And long term, what that means is that those root, the roots will hit the bottom of the pot, they'll start circling and they have nowhere to go. So those, that circling will just build up and build up and build up over time. And eventually you'll have this like thick layer of roots at the bottom. So what most people do when they're growing like a tree in a pot is they'll actually, after a couple of years, they'll, they'll break the pot, then they'll cut all those roots off, and then they'll have to put the tree back in a new pot. That's a huge undertaking and it's very dangerous for the tree as well. So if you're gonna grow a tree in a pot, I highly recommend using a fabric pot. Fabric pot, no, the roots will never circle as soon as they hit the edge of the pot. They're going to stop growing on the edges. They're going to start growing on the inside of the pot. So grow in a fabric pot, put a little, put like, you know, two pieces of wood 
even underneath the fabric pot so that there's there's good drainage and the roots don't try to come through the bottom because I, I realized they, that started happening at my place so I put something underneath so that there's air on the bottom of the pot too uh, and there but there are certain trees that'll do better in pots than others okay so where where are you uh, where do you live Sarah I live in like West LA oh okay perfect okay uh, you have so many options um, I'm growing a fig in a pot. You can do all sorts of citrus in pots. Uh, you can do guavas. Guavas do well in pots. Mangoes can do well in pots. Um, I'm growing a, I haven't got fruit yet, but it's doing quite well. I'm growing a, a, a dwarf, or not a dwarf, a, a, a miniature banana in a pot. And I'm ex expecting to get some fruit later this year. So you got all sorts of options. Okay, cool. You guys sell that at your place, right? Some of those things? Yeah, we sell the fabric pots. We have the, uh, we have the soil. We have all the ingredients to mix your own potting soil, and we have the trees, so you can get awesome. everything. Okay, thank you. Yep. And uh, just as a reminder, if you are a member, you get discounts at the nursery as well. That's one of your benefits. Okay, uh, any other members who have questions? Otherwise, we'll go. Or Swada, are you a member? Not yet? Okay. Any other members have questions? All right, Swada, go ahead. Okay, uh, my question is about the deep root watering. Um, what I have seen a uh, couple of my friends do is they would put a PVC pipe about two inches of diameter uh, into the ground and then they would put a sprinkler pipe in it. So the water is not on the surface, it just goes down. And uh, it's perforated pipe and it's open on the end. So the water goes a little deeper than just the surface. What do you think about that? Yeah, um, it's kind of doing something, but it's really not doing too much. Uh, the, the most important thing is just the, you know, if, if, if the soil's compact and you put a pipe into the ground, like, you might be able to put a little bit more water a little bit faster, but the most important thing is just putting that water on really slow and for a long time so you really soak the soil and you soak it deep. So, um, yeah, I, I don't see any reason to do that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And uh, any, okay, I'm getting some questions in the chat here. Um, I'm about to do the lasagna mulch that I learned in your course. Will this help with groundhogs? So I do, do I need to do something further for this? Okay, so if you have, yeah, if you have groundhogs or if you have moles or if you have uh, gophers and um, you're planting fruit trees, that I've had this happen a couple times. You know, on a, on a young tree, newly planted tree, a gopher can definitely come in and, and eat up all the roots uh, and kill the tree. So, um, if you have a problem with gophers, then what I would recommend is uh, you can buy these these uh, gopher baskets. Again, if you're in, if you're near our, if, if you're near Pomona, you can come by to our nursery. We have them. You want to get the 15 gallon size uh, gopher basket. It's something that you'll have to dig the soil out, put the basket in, and then plant the tree in the basket. And uh, that bigger basket is designed from what I've heard, to actually break down after a couple of years, the rust will, will open up the chain um, and, and then the roots can go through and not have any problems. But it gives you protection for a few years once the tree, while the tree is establishing. And then once it's established, if a gopher comes and root, nibbles on a few roots here and there, it's not gonna matter. All right, and uh, I saw a question from Bharat. Did you want to come on? Yeah. I put it on the chat about, it was about the fertilizer. Okay, fertilizer. What type of fertilizer to use and when to fertilize fruit trees? Okay, great. Um, all right, so if you're, again, if, you're, if you do a nice layer of compost and a nice layer of mulch and you do that for a couple of years, that's going to do a huge benefit uh, for your tree's health. The only thing that's missing in compost is a lot of the micronutrients, like a lot of the, the smaller minerals. 
And the other thing that you might need a little bit more of is, uh, is nitrogen. Actually, you might need a little bit of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium as well. Um, but carb the, getting that base of, of carbon from the compost is, is really, really going to do a lot for you because that compost has kind of everything in it in, in uh, good quantities. If you want to give the tree a little bit something extra, right, give it a nice boost and keep it growing really, really healthy. Um, what I would suggest, and this is what I, what I suggest for most, most um, whether it's fruit trees or vegetables, uh, get a nice balanced fish and seaweed-based fertilizer. Sea, sea fertilizers, like ocean-based fertilizers, are really powerful because the ocean contains all of the minerals on earth. Um, so when you're getting a, when you get seaweed or you get ocean fish, um, all of, you know, those, those ingredients have all of these minerals that are going to feed your, feed the microbes in your soil, feed your tree, and you'll get this, you'll start to see that the leaves of the tree actually have this beautiful, like, green gloss. Um, so there's one product that I recommend, again, we carry it in our nursery, it's called Neptune's Harvest um, Ocean, Ocean Fish and Seaweed, I think. I'm going to type it in the, uh, the chat here as well. Neptune's Harvest Fish and Seaweed. Okay, it's, very, it's a very low, it's low nitrogen, potassium, cal, uh, phosphate, phosphorus, has a lot of minerals, and we don't really need a lot of that NPK. We just need a little bit because we already, we're already adding lots of compost and, and uh, we're letting the leaves drop and not raking the leaves away, all that kind of stuff. So we're building up the soil anyways, but at, this will give you a little bit of a boost. Um, what you can do with that is just dilute it at the ratio that it says in the bottle, which is I believe like one tablespoon to a gallon. And you can just spray that right on the leaves of the trees. And you could really do that fairly often. I mean, you could do it as often as once a week. You could do it uh, every two weeks, just whenever you get time, um, that's gonna be a benefit to your trees. I also use this product. We use this at, at the farm. I'm gonna type it again in the, nerf, in the chat. Uh, we use this product called Sea Crop. It is concentrated ocean minerals. So it's basically just ocean water that they've taken the salt out of, they take the sodium chloride out of it, and then they boil it down. And it's just all the other minerals that are in the ocean except the salt. And again, you can spray that on the leaves or you can spray that directly on the soil. If you don't wanna spend the money on these things, you don't need them. These are just extra bonus, okay? Especially in, if you wanna speed things along a bit in the beginning, like you just put the compost, you put the mulch down, you wanna help, help those things break down, you can use these products. If you're okay with waiting, then you, know, you can definitely do without them. And there's all sorts of ways, right, to make our soils uh, super healthy without buying anything, right? Uh, number one would be composting all of your, kit, your food scraps from your kitchen, because all the food scraps have all sorts of nutrients, right? And if we're throwing them away, we're throwing those nutrients away. We can, we can harvest them into the soil. Uh, so, you know, all your food scraps, um, put them into your, your compost them. You know, my, uh, I just put a video up with my grandpa. He's showing his 11 worm bins. He composts everything with worms. And uh, his garden does beautiful from that. Uh, there's, you can... Uh, you know, gather materials from your neighbors that they're throwing away. You can get juice pulp, you can get coffee grounds, you can get, uh, you can get the brewer's mash from breweries. Um, those are all going to contribute to a really healthy soil. If you can, I would say, you know, try to bring in the sea crop at least one time because a lot of these micronutrients are not available in a lot of the food, even though we're eating from the grocery store, whether it's organic or not. So if you can bring it in one time, great. Again, if not, no problem. You can also just go pick up seaweed from the ocean, go to the beach, harvest some seaweed, and uh, throw it in your compost pile, or just chop it up and spread it in the yard. You'll get those minerals that way. All right. 
Uh, okay. Let me see here. I uh, would love to hear more on fruit trees that have already been staked and how, when to remove them. Saw your post this week and would love to hear more. Okay, yeah, this is a really important one. Uh, when you buy fruit trees from a commercial nursery, that's it. So not when you buy trees from my nursery. My, my nursery, we would never stake a tree. But when you buy trees from another nursery, you, what you find is usually you get a tree, it's like, it's like a straight pencil. It's got some foliage on the top. And then there's a stake, and it's like tied right up to the trunk. It's tied super tight. Okay. If you try to take that stake off, the tree has never had to support itself, okay? The tree has been growing with this crutch. And the reason they do this is because they, people think that taller trees are better. So they try to grow the tree as tall as possible. They, they prune off all the lower branches, they tie it to the stake, and they try to keep all the growth going up, 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 up. And so this is, it's called penciling. You li literally see the trunk of the tree is like a pencil, it just goes straight up like that. A tree's trunk should not be a pencil. A tree's trunk should be uh, like a skirt. You know, it should kind of come down and widen at the bottom. So, you know, of course, we can't always buy trees that are in the, you know, the best shape. So we have to deal with what, we're, what we have available to us. So when you're planting a young tree, uh, uh, when you're planting a new tree from a nursery, absolutely, 100%, take the stake off. Okay, you're gonna look at, then you're gonna look at that trunk. You want, I want you to wiggle the trunk with your hand and see how much wiggle there is in that trunk. Okay, and the more wiggle there is, the more you need to chop off from the top. You need to start chopping, chopping, chopping on the top until the point that when you shake, there's not that much wiggle. Okay, and so I know this, is, this seems kind of drastic for a lot of people. But you know, sometimes I'll buy a tree, it's like five feet tall and I'll cut it in half. Cause it's just, it just, the tree cannot support the, that amount of top growth. I'm actually gonna do that. I bought a persimmon tree here. It's, uh, it's like four and a half feet tall. I'm probably gonna cut it right in half. And then we're gonna let the regrowth happen slowly. And as the regrowth happens, right? The tree is gonna feel that movement from the wind. And as it feels the movement from the wind, it's gonna to start to brace up its trunk and it's gonna to start to develop some girth. It's gonna be really important for fruit trees because fruit trees need to carry weight. So we don't want this like spindly little trunk, right? We want a nice, sturdy, strong trunk. I see a lot of people on you know, Facebook posting about their fruit trees and like they've put all these crazy supports, you know, they've built like this two by four structure around the tree. They're tying it up on all these things. Like, <laughs> we don't want to have to do that, okay? We want the tree to be able to support the weight of the fruit. The other, you know, the other thing with this is like, we don't want the tree to be like a, you don't need to prune off all the bottom branches and make it into a shade tree where all the weight's on the top. You can leave the lower branches, actually cut the top of the tree lower, bring the tree lower so that the weight's not all hanging off the ends and, you know, uh, causing the tree to, I've, I've literally tr had trees split in half because they were pruned improperly. The trunk, literally the, you know, you have a tree like with a, with a split in the trunk like that and the branches aren't strong. There's a lot of weight on the end and those branches will literally break the tree in half. You don't want that to happen. Okay, uh, another question here. I probably just have time for one or two more. Uh, is there a benefit of a particular cover crop around trees to or uh, to give them space or better to give them space? I'm not really sure what this question is saying. Caitlin Rogers, could you add, could you write that again? I'm not understanding how it's written. Uh, Narendra asks, does does fruit tree with mul okay does a fruit tree with multiple varieties grafted on the same trunk work well in a home garden? Uh, quick answer to that. Generally, no. I would, I would prefer you just plant different variety trees. The issue with these multi-graft trees, so again, if you don't know what this is, it's like one trunk 
we have one branch of one variety, one branch of another variety, one branch of a third or fourth variety. They usually sell these trees for quite expensive, like $200 plus. Um, each of those varieties is going to grow at a different rate. And so a lot of times what I see happening is one, one variety is super strong. And so that one variety just pulls all the energy from the trunk towards itself. And so you'll have this one branch that's going like crazy. And then there's usually two that are doing okay. And then the, the last one is usually just like barely hanging on. It's getting shaded out by the other, by the other varieties. So um, yeah, I would recommend just instead to plant multiple different trees. Uh, if you want to have more varieties, just plant, plan to put your trees closer together and then prune them to be smaller. So you, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll probably do one of these on pruning in the winter, but you know, just, a, just to say briefly, like you can prune any fruit tree to any size. So if you wanna keep your tree only five feet tall and five feet wide, you can. So if you wanna have, you know, instead of planting a multi-graft plum tree, plant three different plum trees, plant them close together, prune them, prune them heavily. Okay, uh, and now Caitlin asks, is it better for the tree to have a cover crop around it or just a wood chip mulch? Uh, you know, that's, that's a difficult question to answer. Um, most important thing is to have some cover over the soil, whether it's a cover crop or a wood chip mulch. I, you know, I'm not going to say one or the other. Um, but yeah, just make sure, make sure the soil's, soil's covered. And, and you don't have to be like religious about this either. You know, if there's some area of your garden where the soil's not covered, you know, don't worry about it. Actually, you know, there's a lot of uh, insects. Uh, there's like some bees that burrow in the ground that need some exposed soil. So have some air, actually you should have some area exposed. Um, you don't need to cover everything, right? Some people are, get a little religious about this stuff. Diversity is important. Some cover, some mild cover, some deep cover, some planted, some unplanted, it's all good. Okay, I think I can do one more. Whoever wants to raise your hand or uh, ask a question in the chat. Yeah, Swada, go ahead. Oh, actually, let me, Swada, I got one here from Sarah, Sarah Jo. Sarah Jo, go ahead. Hi. Hi, I'm Arishi. How are you? Good, um, are you? Good. Okay, so I had a, I put a question in the chat, so I don't know if you can answer both of these, but um, one was about what you thought about the um, Griffith Park composting facility. They have free uh, mulch, but they also have free compost. I've gotten the mulch there before, um, and it's just the mulch. I don't think there's a problem with the mulch, but I wondered what you thought about the compost, actually. Um, and uh, just a second question would be, I have, a, I have a pretty old avocado that's like, you know, probably 60 years old or something. So it's quite large, um, and it does bear fruit. I, I keep it mulched all the time, a lot of leaves, all of that but I don't almost ever like really fertilize it. So I'm sort of been listening a lot to what you're saying and thinking, well, maybe I should do like a nice layer of compost, you know, in addition to the mulch that's already both adding some and the leaf, uh, both wood mulch and, and leaf. And what you think about that and if you th would think like a six foot diameter kind of thing uh, just because I don't want to go too crazy with the mulch because it, you know, three inches uh, would be quite a lot in the, that size. All right, let me ask you a first question uh, <laughs> about the city, the city compost. The, uh, the only, I, I have heard a few people have had issues with LA city compost um, because they use um, sewage, sewage waste in their composting facilities. I think some of the composting city facilities use sewage waste and some don't. So you probably wanna call and ask if that one uses sewage waste. Again- I think there's a lot of zoo, of, from the zoo because it's very zoo. near. The one that's in Griffith Park is like, that's what it's sort of known for. They call okay. it zoo, yeah. Zoo so anyway. 
Yeah, yeah, I would probably be okay with like the zoo one. I would probably be okay with because you know they might be giving the animals like I've heard they give the animals a lot of medicine, but I would assume most mm -hmm. of that would break down. I um, see. Okay. But the sewage waste has is going to have like a lot of pharmaceuticals. I think one person I knew got it and they had it tested and it was very high in lead, which is scary. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So if you're going to use okay. Man human manure, just use your own. Don't <laughs> use the cities. Okay. Uh, Thank you on that one. And then your second question about the avocado. You said the avocado is 60 years old? Well, I mean, I've been here 30 years and I'm sure it was, you know, it, it's like a taller than the house. It's a single story house. And How we it, uh, on the trunk, what are we talking here? Like, so the trunk big? is like, um, yeah, like, like three to four feet in, three, okay. three feet diameter, three and a half, something around there. Okay. All right. So, so your avocado probably has roots like through your whole property by now. Okay. So you don't need to specifically, um, and I wouldn't amend around the trunk. I would amend, you know, everywhere else. Mm -hmm. So if you want, if you're, you know, uh, whatever you do to apply compost or mulch anywhere in your yard yeah. is going to benefit okay. this avocado tree. Okay, that's good. And tell your neighbors too, because they're probably, it's got roots probably in their yard too. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. Okay. So uh, thank you all for joining today. I will just re, uh, reiterate here that this is going to be done through our nonprofit Sarvodia Institute. And uh, if you want to join us next month, you can go to our website. I'll put it in again in, in the chat um, and sign up for the membership, just $5 a month as a donation to our nonprofit. And uh, I'll Again, same, same format next month, half an hour of a gardening lesson and half an hour of your questions. And yeah, so happy so many of you joined us today. Thank you. Nana, you, have, you wanna say something, Nana? You gotta unmute. Nana, you gotta unmute yourself. He's figuring it out. This is my grandfather. Oh, maybe I can do it for him. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. We can all hear you. I, I, it was a very educational information that you gave. Even though I have done a lot, I still have learned quite a bit from your information on mulching and everything. Could I ask you a question? This horse manure, can it be used instead of... Uh, yeah, mulch, and then you put on top of it, you know, the uh, bark or whatever. Yeah, yeah, um, you could definitely, he's got a good point. I would actually use the horse manure instead of the compost. I would put horse manure uh, and then put the wood chips on top of the horse right, manure. Right, right. Uh, if you leave the horse manure on the top, you'll probably get a lot of flies. Yeah, that's right. So if you no, put the horse I, manure. Yeah, I meant the same thing, you know. Instead yeah. of mulch, you uh, put that thing over there yeah. under the mulch. Yeah, yeah, Good. under the mulch. Yeah. I'm interested in becoming your member. <laughs> thank you, now. I like it. Very good. All right. Thank you all for joining, and I uh, hope to see many of you next month. <coughs> Leaving? Yep, I'm going to close it right now. Bye. Bye.